Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a review and final diagnosis on the Spyderco Drunken. If you go back on my channel, you will see the unboxing and initial impressions video where I was blown away with how nice this knife was out of the box. The materials, the execution, and everything are just really impressive. Uh, at least on paper, and certainly when you first get the knife. And so now I've had some time to live with the knife, carry it for a few weeks, cut with it, see what it's all about, take it apart, put it back together. And uh, now I wanted to give you my final diagnosis on this knife. And uh, I'm really excited to bring you guys this video. So uh, I purchased this knife uh, on the secondary market, and uh, I was really happy to get a little bit of a discount on it. This knife costs $410. Uh, these these final diagnosis videos, I want to take out a lot of the uh, stuff that you can find in the unboxing video. If you're looking for specs and other objective things, let's go back to that video. This is going to be more subjective on this one. So uh, we were talking about the f cost of $410. That is really high. And a lot of people, when I published this on my Instagram and my initial video, uh, they were like, I'll never pay $410 for a Spyderco. I think anyone who holds that opinion is very, very wrong because Spyderco also makes nice knives. From time to time, Spyderco, at least now, are going to start making super high-end production knives and we need to be encouraging that. Spyderco, for the longest time, has been making simple knives like the Paramilitary series. I hesitate to bring mine out because it's not quite a stock knife right there, but They've been making these sort of simple knives for a long time, and now they're stepping into a new territory. And I think that the price is very well deserved because Spyderco doesn't make a ton of these knives relative to their other knives. So it's a new investment category for them. And what they're doing is actually going a step beyond what you might expect from some other companies, namely Zero Tolerance. We're just going to talk about that and the elephant in the room that Spyderco is outdoing Zero Tolerance by making this knife. Yes, this knife costs maybe, uh, you know, Spider oh, ZT is 280 and this is 410, so it's 120 more dollars, 130 more dollars. But how much money is that in reality? If you're spending $200, $300 on a knife, what's the problem with spending $400 on a knife? And if the knife is better, then it should be no problem. And this knife is better. What I'm saying is they're outdoing their competition. And at this price point, it is as good as many of the other knives offered at this price point. Let's talk about some other knives offered at this price point. A Chris Reeve Sebenza comes in at $425. A Hinderer XM18 is coming in right there. These are some serious competitors for a knife like this. Those are sort of the stalwarts, the, the go-to knives at that price category. Is this knife better than those knives? I'm not going to tell you yes. I'm going to tell you that this knife offers some interesting things that are different than those knives. This knife brings the Spyderco philosophy of a useful tool knife and takes it into the fancier uh, sort of segment. The only other company I know that has a similar philosophy is Shirogorov knives. I don't have a Shirogorov knife uh, in front of me right now, but Shirogorov makes extremely functional knives extremely well for what some would say extremely high prices. What Spyderco is doing is creating knives of similar quality, of similar philosophy for some, ex some, some extra money, but not the same price point. It's great to see an American company doing this. I am American, so I support that. Even though this knife is built in the Taichung, Taiwan factory, what I would like to see Spyderco do is bring some of this manufacturing capability back to the United States. But I understand the cost of running a business sometimes can be prohibitive. And I must say that the Taichung guys have really gotten very good at making a high-end knife. So... What I wanted to do was go ahead and break this knife down anatomically and talk about what I've enjoyed about it and uh, see where we end up at the end of the video. Right here up front is a blade of S90V steel done in a mirror stone wash. I cannot emphasize enough how awesome it is that they were able to execute this mirror washed blade. 
Mirror washing a blade is a pain in the butt. Ask any knife maker. I have not done it, but it's they told I have been told in the past that it is significantly more difficult to do a good mirror wash than it is to do a Damascus or a Sanmai blade or a Damas steel blade because of how much polishing and time you have to put into this. If custom makers have a hard time making one of these blades because it takes so long, imagine a company doing this on a grand scale. And now add to that a steel like S90V, a steel that is known for its toughness and its difficulty to polish. This knife did not, does not take a true mirror polish. It is extremely polished and reflective, but uh, it still does not achieve the same sort of mirror finish that, say, this CPM 154 achieves, seen on this Spyderco, not Spyderco, this Peter Rosenti Nirvana. Sorry, just getting these all confused with these spider holes everywhere. <clears throat> so, uh, what I will say is that they've done a beautiful job of making this blade. Uh, and the finish work cannot be understated. I just have to say that that in and of itself is worth $100 to me, the amount of time that they put into that blade. So that, that's where I see a lot of effort. Add to that the fact that it is beautifully ground. This thing is super thin behind the edge. I'm going to go ahead. Let me bring out here some calipers. See if we can measure some area behind the edge. Right behind the edge right there. 0.23. 0.023. 0 0.025, 0 0.028, that might be a little bit not right behind the edge, 0 0.026. So we're looking in the 0 0.024 to 0 0.026 range. That's going to be very, very similar to your paramilitary series, which is classically some of the most sliciest blades out there. Add to that the fact that the stock is a bit thinner coming in at like 138 thousandths on the Drunken versus 145 thousandths on the Para series, and you've got a nice, thin, slicey blade. Uh, add to that this blade shape. At first, I thought it was a little funny looking, but this is an amazing shape for everyday carry. It is a nice hybridization of the Warncliffe and the Drop Point style blade, where you gain the safety of a rounded tip right here so you can slide this against materials and skin very safely it raises the tip away from that surface as you do this but it also allows you to have a tip and so you can stab with this knife and get good stabbing cuts this has a beautifully sharp edge mine came with very even bevels uh, and it came incredibly sharp now s90v is a bit of a nightmare to sharpen I'll give you that much. This is not going to be ideal, but if you're paying $400 for a knife, odds are you either know how to sharpen your knife or you know someone who knows how to sharpen a knife made out of S90V, and so it's probably not going to be a problem. Right here, uh, the spidey hole cannot be overlooked. I really enjoy the way that this is tumbled and finished. It really allows for the knife to be spidey flicked easily. Something that I did not enjoy about the Spidey Chef, you can go back and watch my comparison video between this and the Spidey Chef, is that the Spidey Chef really had an inaccessible hole. Even though the Spidey hole is somewhat covered up here, which is a mild annoyance, it is still very easy to flick, and I open it that way every time, and I really enjoy that. So, the reason that I enjoy that, we'll go ahead and move back to the pivot, is that it runs on phosphor bronze washers. As you can see, this knife is not the drop shut knife that some other knives may be. I'm going to bring out the Paisan right here. The Paisan is, like I mentioned in the comparison video between these two knives, more of a fun knife. It really just falls shut on that ball bearing action. The heavy blade allows this to be a fun knife to play with just like that. This knife is not so much of a toy so much as it is a tool. And that's also what I said in the comparison there. And so you have to keep that in mind. Much like a Chris Reeve Sabenza or something of that nature, this is not a toy-like knife, an Instagram flippy knife or something like that. This keeps true to Spyderco's heritage of making very excellent tool knives that are no nonsense. The Phosphor Bronze Washers really convey a sense of strength and longevity to this knife, but it also removes any illusions that this is a knife for show. This is a beautiful knife with a lot of things to show, 
but it is not a knife for show, it is a knife for use. And I really appreciate that they did that and it stays true to that. And as you use this knife, you feel that. I've carried both of these knives now and I'll say I enjoyed this one for the purity of the experience. Uh, it's really hard to describe. It's a bit like having a manual transmission in a car or something like that. It's just a more uh, tactile and engaging experience and I enjoyed that very much. I really also like the design of the Pivot. The Pivot hardware is simple yet cool. It's a large and well-colored piece of titanium. Uh, these are T10 screws and very easy to disassemble. The Pivot is keyed on the inside and will not freely rotate. You can easily disassemble this knife. Uh, the, there are also two other keyed pivots that enter into this titanium backspacer. They also do not rotate and they're also very easy to take out these T6 screws. That's something that I was a little bit annoyed by. I was happy that this was a T10, but then these went all the way down to a T6. We should have had T8s here, guys. This should have been T8s. That's just a, a bit of a, a thing for me. Uh, it's quality hardware. This is steel hardware. This is titanium. Perhaps on a knife of this sort of level of grandeur, we could have seen blue titanium screws. My good friends over at Blades We Love can hook you up with some of those blue titanium screws. They did actually advertise some of that. I think it looks pretty nice. Moving back to the handles, let's go ahead and talk about why this knife is so impressive. This is where this knife goes into hyperspeed in terms of its progression past the other Spydercos in the lineup. I posted a picture on my Instagram recently of taking this knife apart. Internally, this knife is extremely impressive. There is a hollowed out area all within the carbon fiber and then a steel liner that has been holed out in order to reduce weight. This side of the titanium has been so extensively milled. There's like 14 different pockets milled into this in strategic areas, all designed to reduce weight. There is an external lock bar cutout, and then it's also milled on the inside of the lock bar cutout to reduce weight. The external side of both of these scales have this really ridiculously amazing drunken milling pattern. This is the Dmitry Sinkovich influence right here. His drunken milling pattern has been executed flawlessly right here. That is extremely difficult to achieve. Some people have asked me, why is that so difficult? I'm not a machinist, but if you can uh, imagine putting a piece of carbon fiber into your CNC machine, yes, you have to program this wavy pattern and you can just hit enter, but you also have to have the tools in order to make that happen. And you can imagine as you're grinding through hundreds and hundreds of these scales that you have to have very fine, small tools to make these very fine lines and that they're going to wear out. If you're trying to mill grade five titanium, you're gonna have some stuff wear out on you. And so you have to maintain the quality of your pieces so that the milling lines are clean everywhere, every time across hundreds of knives. And that's just extremely impressive to have this perfect of external milling and this extensive of internal milling is absolutely impressive. And that brings this knife to a very nice weight of two, uh, excuse me, 3.75 ounces. So 3.75 ounces, 3.5 inches of blade, amazing ratio right there for this level of quality. To be perfectly honest with you, when I made the uh, Paizan versus Drunken video, I didn't choose a winner, but in my opinion, I choose the Drunken. I enjoyed the Drunken significantly more from a tool perspective, from an impressive sort of production perspective, I understand that the integral handle of the Paizan is an amazing achievement as well, but you can see it better on the Drunken. The amazing thing about Peter Rizenti and his work, and that translates into the Paizan, is that it's amazing engineering and, and design, but it's extremely subtle. You almost can't see it. It's almost so plain that it's boring. On the Drunken, you can see every single detail that they did in order to make this knife impressive. And so that impact factor is certainly there. Add to that the fact that this knife is just damn good as an EDC. 
I know I talk about all these little things here and there about these knives, but in summary, this knife is excellent to carry every single day. The blade is incredible. This is one of the best blades I have ever had on a knife, period, ever. It's really, really great. The shape of it, the length of it, the grind, the steel, the finish, the opening and closing, everything is spectacular on that blade, and I really, really like it. I love the fact that it's on phosphor bronze washers, that it's not a toy knife, and that it stays true to Spyderco's philosophy of making excellent tool knives. I like the handle. I find that it's extremely ergonomic in my hand. I have a size 8 sterile glove. I wear an extra large glove uh, in general sizes. And my hand gets a full grip on it. The contouring of the handle in this direction makes it extremely comfortable in this grip. It makes it extremely comfortable in this grip, in this grip, in the reverse grip. Everything is comfortable. There are no hot spots. Now, the one drawback of this knife, and the fatal flaw for a lot of people, is the pocket clip. We cannot end this discussion without discussing the pocket clip. However, like many things on the internet, I feel that the rumors of the pocket clip have been greatly overstated. This pocket clip issue is very easily remedied by holding it like this for a few seconds and releasing the tension on that pocket clip. I was able to get any type of jeans or pants all the way up to riding all the way down on this, and it's no big deal anymore. Perhaps you could bend it out, but I feel that Spyderco should address this. They need to understand that their clips are too tight, they need to rebend them, they need to change that, they need to CQI that immediately, or they're going to have a lot of unhappy customers. I don't know that a lot of people are comfortable bending these things out, or they don't, or they think that it should come perfectly from the factory. But this is going to be the one major drawback. Otherwise, this is a freaking perfect knife. And my final diagnosis is that this is probably the finest knife that Spyderco has ever made. I'm not going to say that it's the best knife that they've ever made because that's a ridiculous statement. But in my opinion, this is the finest knife that they've ever done. It is the most refined. It is the most Spyderco. And it's beautifully done. Every single millimeter of this knife has been engineered to perfection. Spyderco has knocked it out of the park in terms of executing this knife. Besides a small annoyance with the clip, this is a truly impressive knife. And for $400, it's absolutely worth every single penny. If you consider this a baby Shirogorov, it suddenly makes sense. Try getting a Shirogorov for less than $700 new. This is just as good as any of those knives, maybe better, Maybe more EDC friendly than some of those more expensive knives. Really, really, really an excellent piece. I could not be happier with this knife. Put this right up there next to the Capara. Okay, the Capara is the true baby version of this. Yes, the Spidey Chef was okay. I didn't really like the Spidey Chef, if I'm perfectly honest, because of the ergonomics of the handle. The Capara and this knife are like baby brother and big brother. I probably should have done that comparison video, but that's how good it is. It's right there next to Capara in terms of excellence. And so highest level of recommendation on this knife from Dr. Frunky. I could not like it anymore. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. Leave some comments down below about what you think of the Spyderco Drunken. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram as Dr. Frunky. Head over to Patreon and help support me at www.patreon.com forward slash Dr. Frunky. And as always, guys, take care.